A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hail Silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver! Let's go, Mitchell! I'm Silver! Dan Reed, the Lone Ranger's nephew, had ridden into the town of Eastville to buy supplies. Returning to camp a short time later, he was visibly excited as he reined Victor to a halt. Whoa, whoa, Victor, whoa, boy, whoa, whoa. Made a fast trip, Dan. <laughs> Quick as I could, easy boy. <clears throat> Golly. Anything wrong? No, but I sure got some important news. Is well, that so? Did you get the supplies? Sure, they're in the saddlebags. Uh, here, here. You take them, Dan. Thanks, Tyler. Now, what's the important news? There's a circus playing in Eastville. It's not a very big one, but it's got real acrobats and clowns and trick riders, and, and there's one of those handbills that tells about it right here. Oh, let me see. Hmm. One day only, the Mighty Monarch Circus visits Eastville. See death-defying acrobats, funny clowns, feats of daring horsemanship, hundreds of other unusual attractions too numerous to mention. Come one, come all. Two complete performances, afternoon and evening. Don't you think that's important? <laughs> yes, it is, Dan. If it weren't for the fact that I'm going to be busy repairing saddle gear this afternoon, I'd like to see the Mighty Monarch Circus. Oh, you're going to be busy? <laughs> yes, but you aren't. It is Tonto. So I'd suggest that both of you head for Eastville right now. Oh, golly, did you hear that, Tonto? <laughs> uh, that plenty good. Here, yeah, Dan, you'll need some money. Gee, thanks. I sure wish you were going with us. I'd like to go, Dan. That's impossible, so I'll do the next best thing. Hope that you remember everything that happens... Tell me all about it when you get back. Golly, don't worry. I'll remember. Ready, Tonto? Uh, we settle up right away. Although it was small compared to many other traveling circuses, the mighty monarch made up in spirit for what it lacked in size. The main tent was crowded, and the afternoon performance had just started when Dan and Tonto arrived. They found seats overlooking the big sawdust ring and prepared to enjoy themselves. Gee, Tano, I wonder what's going to happen next. I me mean, not know. Big feller in ring. Him make talk. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Sleeko. Sleeko, the man with the iron jaw. Watch him make his dangerous, death-defying slide for life. Sleeko is now at the top of the tent. Watch him! Hey, 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 hey,
slide down the wire hanging by his teeth. saw so many palominos at one time. Look at their long manes and tails, Tonto. Uh. To demonstrate the remarkable intellect of these extraordinary horses, we ask the assistance of our young musical virtuoso, Horace Taylor, the king of the Calliope. Think about Horace. Me yeah. uh, not savvy Calliope. It is something like a piano, Tonto, only the music is made with a lot of steam whistles. Oh. Now, around the ring, uh. marching two abreast and they're really keeping time with the music. Ah, uh, you never see horse do things like this. Ali, neither have I. Look at that, they're trotting in two separate circles, one inside the other. Uh. They've turned and they're all heading for the Calliope. And they're all standing up on their hind legs. Golly! Oh, that's plenty good trick. It's the best one I've ever seen. Gee, I wonder who trained him to do all those things. How'd you like the circus, Joe? Great. Them acrobats are pretty fancy. Well, I like the horses. Yeah. Wish I could teach Mike how you use a few tricks like that. Oh, that's Gee, Tano, I sure had a swell time, didn't you? Ah. I'll bet those Palominos are the smartest trick horses in the whole world. Ah. <laughs> you, you like them better than Victor, your horse? Gee, no. <laughs> I wouldn't trade Victor for anything. I mean, I like the tricks the circus horses did. Oh. Say, where'd we leave Scout and Victor hitched? In trees behind big tent. Oh, sure, I remember now. We came by this little tent right here. Must be where the circus people change clothes. Oh, no. uh. That's not part of my job. You can't make me do it. Okay, Nate. We'll see about that. Look, Tano, it's the boy who plays the calliope. And that big fella's the ringmaster. Uh. Take care of him and play the calliope. But I'm not supposed to work in a cook tent, too. You're supposed to do anything I tell you. Right now, I'm telling you to get over to the cook tent and go to work. Savvy? No, I ain't going to. Maybe a few cuts with this whip will change your mind. Oh! Tano is using a horse whip. Uh, let me stop. A redskin. Move along, Engine. Mind your own business. Do not hit, little feller. Oh. That's it, Tano. Good work. Gee, you knocked him cold. Uh. Oh, I didn't see... Where'd you two come from? From the main tent. We've been watching the show. Why was he using that whip on you? He's trying to make me work in a cook tent between shows. He's the ringmaster. Yeah, I know. You play the calliope for the trick horses, don't you? That's right. I sure appreciate what you did, Engine. But both of you'd better get away from here quick. If he comes to, he'll start yelling, hey, Rube. Hey, Rube? What's that? Well, it's what circus folks yell when they want help in a fight. No sense in you battling about 50 Ross about just on my account. I'll be all right. Well, Tano and I were on our way back to camp. My horses are hitched right over there in those trees. I'll walk over that way with you. Good chance for me to make myself scarce until time for the evening show. All right. Your name's Horace Taylor, isn't it? Yeah. I'm Dan Reed, and this is Tano. Oh. oh I'm glad to know both of you. Tano's got the greatest right-hand punch I've ever seen. He's just as good with his left. We sure enjoyed the circus, especially your act with the horses. Thanks. And the way you play that calliope, I'll bet it took a long time to learn. Oh, not so long. See, I used to take piano lessons. Golly, you're the first real musician I've ever known. I'm not a real musician. If I had any real talent, I wouldn't be trooping to the small-time circus out here in the West. Well, I don't see anything wrong with... Oh, don't misunderstand me. I like this part of the country. It's my home. When I left here three years ago, I, I didn't expect to come back like this. What do you mean? Don't your mother and dad have... folks are dead. I was raised by my Uncle Frank. 
He owns a cloverleaf ranch. About five miles west of here. I've seen that brand, Cloverleaf, on a lot of range stock. Oh, it's a big ranch. I'd like to live there, but, well, I wanted to take piano lessons, and that made my uncle mad. Gee. He wouldn't have a piano in the house, so I'd sneak over to a neighbor's place. She gave me lessons and let me practice. And did your Uncle Frank find out about it? Sure. That's when he said I'd have to either give it up or get out and make my own living. So you... I thought I was a great musician. Went back east and... Well, I almost starved to death until I landed this job at the circus. No good at music and never will be. Maybe you can go back home, to the Cloverleaf, I mean. Oh, no, Uncle Frank wouldn't let me set foot on the place. No chance of that. Hush! Hush! Golly, that sounds like the ringmaster. Oh, it is. I can't let him find me now, especially with you. After your engine, friend, I'll cut over to the left and you straddle your horses. We're not afraid of him, Horace. You don't have to run... Ru- save argument and trouble. But thanks again for what you did. Uh, well, maybe I'll see you again sometime. Gee... I thought Horace's job would be a lot of fun. I guess I was wrong. Ah, young fella have plenty of trouble. Steady, boy. Steady, boy. If I were Horace, I wouldn't stay with the circus five minutes. Ah. Well, better we head for camp now, Dan. Sky look plenty black. Maybe rain come quick. Gee, you're right, and I don't want to get caught in a storm. Come on, Victor. Get him up, Scout. Frank Taylor, owner of the Cloverleaf, was a hard-bitten old-time cattle rancher. He'd homesteaded his land, and through the years had built it into one of the finest ranches in Antelope Basin. He paid high wages to his cow hands. In return, he demanded hard work. Perhaps that was the reason Duke Hewlett, the foreman, and Sash Willis resented their employer's success. Hi, Dick. Oh, Sash. Storming outside, ain't it? Now, worse than that. I got soaked to the skin riding back from Eastville. Look. Yeah. And I'll lay eight to five. The old man will be down here to the bunkhouse pretty soon, yelling he wants his herd to prize her for cows brought back to the barn. Not me. I ain't playing nursemaid to a lot of cow critters on a night like this. A little rain won't hurt them Herefords. Don't hurt the Longhorns. There's a lot of difference. Herefords are prize stock. Worth plenty of money. You want him hazed back to the barn? Oh, he's loco. Ain't got any business trying to raise fancy cows anyway. Why don't he stick to longhorns like everybody else? I don't know. I'd like to have the cash that herd would sell for. Say, Deke, guess who I saw at the circus in these... Ah, uh, what do I care who's in the circus? I never... Oh, the old man's nephew. Remember Horace? The kid he booted out of here about three years ago? Well, Horace is playing one of them steam pianos with the circus. <laughs> it's about all that spindly leg critter would be good for. He didn't... Deke! What do you want? He's looking around here, Perry. Can't you hear that rain? Sure, boss. Get your crew did. together. Line out for the south range. That Hereford stock grazing over there can't stand weather like these. Bring him in. Well, the boys don't like that. I don't care what they like. I'm right with you. Let's get started. All right, boys. Skin into your ponchos and saddle up. Then make it pass. The storm's getting worse all the time. <laughs> It's really raining now. Yes, Dan. I'm afraid we made a mistake pitching camp out here on the flats. The shell is beginning to leak. Maybe better we ride west to mountain. Find cave for camp. It's a good idea, Tonto. We'll... What's the matter? Well, listen. Uh, big herd of cattle head this way. Trail cross creek near here. I know. The Antelope Creek's at flood stage now. Can't be forded. Uh, maybe feller who herd cows not know. Them come plenty fast. Golly. Well, we've got to stop them before they reach the creek. Here, Silver. Come, Scout. Wait, I'll get Victor. No, Dan. Steady, big fella. You wait here and keep the fire going. We'll need it when we get back. Steady, All steady, right. Fella. One, Silver. Get up, Scout. Gee, whenever there's any real excitement, I have to stay behind. Curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
all to continue our story. Urging their horses forward through sheets of driving rain, the Lone Ranger and Tonto were soon abreast of the racing cattle. These are Herefords, Tonto. They won't be hard to handle. Uh-huh. Right close to the leaders. Use your guns. I'll do the same thing. Uh-huh. The noise will make them swing east before they reach the creek. Let's go. One, two, three. Get up, Scout. That's it, Tonto. They're swinging over. That's enough. Oh, hold on, 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 hold the creek's at least six feet deep. Six feet? Sash. Sash Willis. Yeah, boss? I thought you told me the creek wasn't flooded. It wasn't when I rode back from Eastville. Uh, you lay brain half with him. Deke. Yeah. Trail your crew. Get those cows across the north bridge and into the cloverleaf bar. Right. You take that and head his Sash Willis with you. If it hadn't been for these masks, I'd on his engine partner. My whole herd would have piled up in the creek. Now, come on, Sash. Yeah. Ah. I want to thank you, stranger. One, two, three. Let's count. One, two, Go on. <laughs> I've been raging this country for 40 odd years. I've never seen Al Hoots like them before. Get up there. The rainstorm lasted for three days and nights. It forced the Lone Ranger, Dan, and Tonto to seek shelter in a mountain cave west of Antelope Basin. It caused Frank Taylor to curse the weather that kept his prize Hereford stock from feeding on the open range. It forced the long wagon train of the mighty Monarch Circus to become hopelessly bogged down on a muddy trail just outside Eastville. Most of the circus drivers, tenders, and roustabouts deserted their wagons and disappeared. Horace watched the Palomino horses nuzzle their empty feed bags. Then... He decided to visit his Uncle Frank. I didn't come back to stay, Uncle Frank. I came to ask you a favor. Begging, eh? Now that you've let that piano play and make a tramp out of you, you want something. Well, not for myself. The 16 Palomano horses were the circus. They haven't been fed for three days because we're broke. Yeah? Well, what do you want from me? I want enough hay and grain to feed them. The trail will dry out now that it's stopped raining. And when we get to the next town and make some money, I'll send you cash for the feed bill. You live all the dead blame nerve... A piano playing pip squeak like you asking for. All right. Sorry I asked you, Uncle Frank. Now, wait a minute. I won't sit by and see any animals starve to death. Oh, you mean you'll Go give... down to the bar and see Deke, my foreman. Tell him to load some grain and hay into one of the wagons and drive you to wherever your broken down circus is stranded. Oh, gee, thanks, Uncle Frank. I'll... Pay... I'm not doing it for you. I haven't changed my mind about you or the piano. So get out. Feeling back early this morning, Dan. Yeah, I thought him, I heard him dismount just after daybreak. <laughs> Guess I must have been half asleep. <laughs> you were. You went after supplies. See, we'll have to stay here in this new camp for a few days until our gear dries out. It's better than sleeping in the cave. Golly, yes. That sure was some storm. I'll bet the trail's awful muddy, isn't it, Tano? Ah, uh, it plenty bad. Me past circus wagons. Them all bogged down at the bottom of a hill. Gee, that's too bad. Ah. Uh, me hear men in town make talk. Them say ringmaster and circus run away. Take all money. Golly, I knew he was a crook. I wish you'd socked him harder, Tonto. Uh, well, evidently the circus is stranded. I wonder what Horace is doing. He's had so many tough breaks already. I'm just going to suggest something, Dan. Why don't you ride over to the circus wagons and invite Horace to camp with us for a few days? Gee, that's a great idea. Shall I go right away? I think you better wait till this afternoon. The mud on the trail will be dried out by that time. Sure. Then Horace and I can ride back in time for supper. Oh, oh, Victor, whoa, 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 whoa. Hi, Horace. Hi, Dan. 
I came to invite you to our camp for a few days. You can live there and still ride over here to take care of the horses. How about it? Oh, thanks. Gosh, it's mighty nice of you. Come on, saddle up. It's almost dark. We'll get back to camp in time for supper. Yeah, I'll... Oh, wait a minute. I'll have to put out the fire in the calliope boiler. I kept the steam up so I could sit by the boiler and keep warm. Walk over there with me, Dan. Sure. Here comes a the kid, Deke. There's another sprout with him. They're doing two left. Yeah. Grab him. Put him like a horse. Deke, kill it. You're Uncle Frank Foreman. What's the idea of this? Oh. Shut up. Oh, you two kids keep your trap shut and you won't get hurt. Otherwise... <laughs> Otherwise what? We'll cool you off like we did those armies who were playing poker. An axe handle over the head. You want some? No, all Drop right. some rope to tie him up, and I'll call the rest of the boys. How <coughs> can I? Oh, don't worry. I don't think either one of them wants to stop any lead. You're sure brave with a gun in your hand. Shut up. Get the ropes, Ash. Yeah. All you hombres, quiet down. I'll tell you what we're going to do. Take the saddles off the horse you rode over here. And each of you take one of them palominos over there at that picket line. Hurry up. I still know Sally. Right. It's simple. We head for the South Range and herd every one of the old man's Hereford cowed critters through Antelope Gap. From there, it's a cinch to get him to Mexico in a cash buy. Sure, but... Well, if we heard him that way, we've got to pass within a quarter mile of Eastville. Somebody's sure to spot us. You can't move 200 head of stock without That's being... That's why we're using the circus horses. They'll be recognized. Who gets blamed for the rustling? A lot of saddle tramps who used to work for the circus. Well, Deke, I gotta admit, you figured you it's. You gents so we... ready to ride? Yeah. All right. Straddle one of these cayuses, Sash. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Ah. Yeah. Did you hear that, Dan? They're gonna rustle all Uncle Frank's prize stock. Yeah, I know. And there's no way we can stop them either. Tied right up like this, lying on the bottom of a wagon. Our only hope is that my friends will wonder why we didn't show up at camp. It seemed like a year to Dan and Horace Taylor. Actually, less than an hour went by before they heard hoofbeats approaching the deserted circus wagon. Oh, Silver, hold on. Hold on. Seem to be anyone around here, Tonto. Uh, over here. We're over here in the wagon. Dan. We're tied up over here, both of us. Now, what happened? Help me with these ropes, Tonto. Uh, oh, thanks. Dan. Thanks a lot. I... What? You were in a mess. Never mind that, Horace. Tell him about Dee Cooler, your uncle's crooked foreman, and what he's doing. There. Uh, what do you mean, Dan? A lot of cowpunchers. They came over here to steal the Palomino horses. They're using them to help rustle Mr. Taylor's Hereford cattle, and it's the same stock What's that you... What's the idea of stealing circus horses to do it? So if anybody sees him, the circus will be blamed. Horace and I heard Deacon and another man plan the whole thing. Oh, I see. Maybe we can stop them. Oh, I don't think so. There's 18 or 20 cow punches and all carrying guns. We are outnumbered. There's no time to ride to Eastville and get the sheriff. And they had a head start, so I guess I'll get away with it. Mm -hmm. The horses they stole. Horace, are they the same palominos you used in the act Dan told me about? Well, yes, but... Good. What... And we may be able to do something. A long shot, but it's worth trying. What do you mean? The first thing to do is build a fire in the boil of your steam calliope. Well, there is a fire there now. Horses... And we're in luck. The draft horses here the ones you used to pull the calliope? Oh, I'm sure they are. Deke wasn't interested in stealing them. And come on, we'll have to work fast. I don't understand. I'll explain as we go along. Right now, we've got to hitch up the calliope and start driving toward your Uncle South Range. Deke Hewlett's rustling job was almost a success. Almost. Because neither Deke nor any of his cowpunchers saw a steam calliope pulled by two heavy draft horses and flanked by a masked man and an Indian approaching in the darkness. Suddenly, the night air was split by the strangest sound ever to echo through Antelope Basin. Eighteen cowpunchers oh, discovered they oh, couldn't yeah. control their Palomino horses. Hey, hey, hey. Ho, ho, ho! Hey, hey, what the... What's that? Of course, the music can trap you from the circus. I don't know how it got up here, but... Ah, this critter I'm riding, I can't hold him. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, 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 o
Anyone else want to try the same thing? All right, Toto. You and Dan ride into Eastville and bring the sheriff. Horace now, keep these men covered till you get back. Uh, me do it. Ready, Dan? Sure. Get along, Victor. Gosh, I still can't believe this really happened. It couldn't have happened, Horace. Without a boy like you to train some circus horses and play the calliope. Juniper horse, I, I'm proud of you. You saved every one of my cows, gave the sheriff enough evidence to put that crook deke in jail, and haul his scalawag crew, too. Oh, I didn't do anything, Uncle Frank. Well, you, you trained those horses, did you? You played the calliope? Oh, yeah, but it was the masked man who figured out that those horses would always respond to a music cue. Yeah, that reminds me. Boys, if you ain't that set on traveling with the circus... I, um, uh, I'd sure like to have you back here with me at the Clover Leaf. Oh, gosh, there's nothing I'd like better. And you can have one of them pianos in every dead blame room in the house. You know, I've been a stubborn old fool, John. I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? Oh, there's nothing to forgive, Uncle Frank. It's just a debt of thanks that we can never repay. Debt? What do you mean, Horace? To the Lone Ranger. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.